In this video, I want to take a look at reference files and level display, and a quick look at dimensioning in attached files. Let's start with the level display. Now, as you can see, I've added some extra attachments to our current house design file. Our T block attachment is still in place, and you can see the outline for that. But I've added house plotting design, houses one and two, and house design. Now, a very quick word about the house design attachment. You might notice that the house design attachment is also the same file in which we are currently working. This is called a self attachment. In other words, I've attached the file I'm working in to itself. And we'll be talking about this in much more detail in the next series of videos. Now we need to look at the hierarchy of this file system. And this is the setting that I'm interested in, show hierarchy. So click on that for me. And you will only see in your file just the house design, simply because you have no other attached files. So bear with me as I go through mine. On the left, I see simply the house design in which I'm working. On the right, I see the list of attached files. So these are the lists of attachments. If I expand my house design, I will see exactly the same information as on the right side. But now I can see if any of my attachments have attachments of their own. Let's try the house plotting file first. Click on that. Nothing shows in the right hand box, therefore, house plotting has no attachments of its own. Houses one and two, no attachments. T block, no attachments. But if I click on the house design, which is our current design, then we see the three additional attachments attached to the house design. Now these are what are called nested attachments. They are attachments in an attachment attached to the current file. Now that's confusing, I know. But there's a chain of attachments here, which are visible in the views. Now I'm interested, of course, in which levels will be displayed in these various files, because you don't have to have all levels on at the same time in all attachments. So what I need to do is to be able to see the various levels in my various attachments. To do that, we need to use Control E. So I press Control E at your keyboard, and that pops up the level display. And here we can see, at the moment, the levels in the house design. Now we know this because these are the levels that we actually made when we created this file. But I need to see the levels in the attached files. So click on the same hierarchy symbol. Here I see the attachments to the house design again. And if I click on each one, I can see which levels these attachments have brought. So click on the house plotting design. I see a fair number of levels because this particular drawing is a complex residential drawing. If I click on houses one and two, I see a lot of levels. In fact, I see 63 levels plus the default level. Now you should be aware that if you see this sort of display, this indicates that that particular file is a MicroStation version seven file or earlier. Back then, the 63 levels were automatically created when you opened a file. And that was, in fact, the maximum number of levels that you could have. From version 8 onwards, you could add unlimited levels. Let's go to the T-block file. There are the levels in the T-block attachment. And back to the house attachment. So now you can select any of these attachments and turn on or off the various levels. The blue color indicates levels which are on. I can turn them off simply by selecting them. And I can use multiple methods. That was a shift click. One level, of course, must be on at all times. So I cannot turn off the default level. It will stay on. But if I turn on, say, the wall level, then I can turn off the default level. So let me turn them all back on again. So using shift click again, turn them all on, and let's turn the default on too. So clearly, you can easily edit which levels are displaying in which attachments. And as a further refinement, you can decide whether you want the settings here to apply to all open views, 
or just specific views, in which case you must select the views you want the level settings to apply to. So clearly you need to experiment with this, which means you need to add more attached files with different level systems. And you can do that on your own. That's very good practice. Now getting back to dimensioning, I'm going to dismiss that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Dimensioning is obviously important, but if you think about it carefully, you'll realize that we're working in the current file, the master file, which is the house design, which is at full size. In other words, the elements in the house drawing are at full size. And we're working in the T-block attachment, which has been scaled up by 48 or 50 times. There's clearly quite a difference between the two, and dimensioning is not necessarily automatic. However, there is a switch in the dimension styles box. Here's dimension styles. And I'm interested in the units tab, where we see the reference scale under the scale section. Now let me show you how this works. For our particular drawing, I've set the text height at one foot. In metric, you would use 300 millimeters. So if you want to do that right now, that will be helpful. When you've done that, go back to the Units tab, leave the reference scale off, and I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to start the dimensioning tool. And I'm going to dimension the length of the title block. And we'll see what happens. There and there. And notice that we are seeing 33 feet, 11 and a half inches, which is clearly wrong because you drew the title block at full size, and that dimension was actually nine inches, if you remember. What we're seeing here is a dimension of the current file. So we would use that to dimension the elements in the active file, which in this case is the house design. And that's because the reference option is off, in the Units tab of the Dimensions box. So here I can dimension as normal in the current drawing. However, if I want to dimension this dimension correctly for the title block, I would change the setting here. That would now go on. The scale factor I would leave as 1. And we'll see that we have the nine inch dimension, which is correct for the full size title block, not the 48 times scaled up title block. Now, why is this important? Well, because a very common practice is to insert various references into a single title block and want to plot them at different scales, which is entirely possible to do and very standard, but you'll likely want to dimension those inserted details at different scales. It's very common, for example, in an architectural drawing to have several details on a page all at different scales. In this way, you can edit the value of the scale factor so that when you dimension a specific detail, you can set the scale factor so that you're seeing dimensions at their correct size for that particular detail. Now remember, of course, that as you add dimensions to this drawing, as we did with the nine inch dimension, these dimensions are in the current file. This nine inch dimension is not in the title block drawing, it's in the current house design, as are the text entries that we made earlier. Now this brings up an important point. The text height for both text and dimensions needs to be consistent on any one drawing. So if you're bringing in references to be scaled up or down and then dimensioned, then it's an easy matter to use a single text height for all the details in a design, whatever their insertion scale. So again, in other words, you would not dimension or add text to the files which are being referenced in to the current drawing. 
you will do the dimensions and text in your current master file. That way you have absolute consistency across all attachments. The other way to do it, of course, is to use a text height in an attached file that when scaled up or scaled down results in the same text height in the current design. That's much more difficult to do, but not impossible by any means. And you need to make decisions as to whether you will add text or dimensions before or after referencing those files into a master file. Now, it would be very helpful if you were to take the subject a little further and experiment by using some of your own files and attaching those to the master file at various scales and applying text and dimensions to those attached files and also adding text and dimensions in the attached files themselves before you attach them to the master file at a different scale. That way you understand this backwards and forwards process and the need to really think carefully about where you add text and where you add dimensions.